Hi, guys, we are back. I'm Sanket, your friendly neighborhood data scientist. Hi, and I'm Ria, his friend. In the last episode, we learned how to transform information into knowledge through supervised learning. In this episode, we'll talk about unsupervised learning and show you how to self-organize information. Unsupervised machine learning is a way of discovering structure in data without really knowing what that structure means. Sounds confusing? Let's understand with an example. So we are at the IIIT Bangalore campus and we were just discussing machine learning. And we stepped out and you know, the fresh air just kind of, you know, got us in the mood of chatting about our favorite destinations within India to go for holidays. So Professor, which would be some of your favorite destination spots within India? I would say Shimla ranks the top most. Okay. For me, I think I am a person who likes waves. So I would definitely go for Mumbai. I see. And probably second would be uh, Missouri. Okay. For and me, again, it is Goa. <laughs> I, I love Goa. I see. And then followed by Nainital and possibly Darjeeling. And for me, again, I think it would be Kochi and Kanyakumari. Ah, so there seems to be an interesting pattern here. Don't you realize that? So, basis this, cho these choices from what I understand, uh -huh. I'm mostly choosing, you know, areas near the sea and southern areas. I you see. are choosing areas which are in the northern part of India. Any other patterns that you can think of? Yeah, northern and also hill stations. Okay. Yeah. Versus, yeah. say, southern and beaches. Mm -hmm. And this is some sort of what is called location clustering, right? Okay. So, here was Professor Dinesh and Rohit discussing their favorite holiday destinations. Initially, they did not think of their favorite destinations in terms of beaches, whether the location is in the north or south, or whether it's a beach or a hill station. The pattern just emerged. It seems like there are two distinct uh, clusters or groupings where one of the cluster seems like is north and uh, hill stations. And then there is the other cluster which is more like south and beaches. And it seems like I like the one which is north and uh, hill stations and he likes uh, south and beaches. In the last episode, you learned how computers can learn from experience. And you also learned that to build a party menu planner, you needed information both on the characteristics of the food as well as whether the food item is yummy or not. This supervision is required for the computer to obtain knowledge and use that in future scenarios. But unsupervised learning is different. In unsupervised learning, a computer learns to differentiate between things without you giving it correct answers. But you might be wondering, how is that helpful in today's business scenarios? So let me tell you the answer. Advertisers carry out clustering to identify customers that are similar to their existing good customers. Advertisements served to similar customers typically give a higher conversion rate than serving those same ads to a random set. One of the simple ways in which credit card fraud is detected is when a customer belonging to let's say a cluster of electronics equipment buyers suddenly moves to a cluster of jewelry buyers. When modern retailers provide you with recommendations of similar products or when social media suggests you a person you may know, that is unsupervised learning at play. The applications of unsupervised learning go beyond just business. A lawyer may reason about an ongoing case by recalling a similar case, often aided by unsupervised learning, on large volumes of historical case documents. You now know how important and relevant it is in most of the modern scenarios. So let's understand how unsupervised learning works. Once the objects are represented with their characteristics, we can cluster them together or separately, depending on how similar they are to each other. In the example that you saw, two distinct clusters were formed. One, the northern hill stations, and the other, the southern beach locations, based on the location characteristics. Given these characteristics, it turns out that Shimla, Masuri, Nainital, and Darjeeling are similar to each other. While Mumbai, Goa, Kochi, Kanyakumari are similar as well, but different from the first group in terms of their characteristics. This similarity can be measured mathematically by a commonly used measure called the Euclidean distance. In the unsupervised learning model of the Upgrad Data Science course, one of the case studies we would present to you is based on a data set of customers of an online store. Clustering is employed in such cases to target and serve the customers better. Using Python, you will learn to pre-process data, 
make the clusters, decide the optimal number of clusters, and most importantly, interpret the results, which are often quite subjective in this form of machine learning. RFM methodology, which is very commonly employed in organizations, will be used as a framework to structure your data into the right format for clustering. Over the last four episodes, we have learned a lot about data collection, data handling, inferring from the data, and self-organization of the data. And this brings us to the next most important part, big data, which we are going to cover in the next episode. So, so stay, stay tuned, tuned for, for the, the next, next episode. episode.